Well, I'm not the kind to kiss and tell, but I've been seen with fair up. I've never been with anything less than a nine. So fine, I've been on fire with Sally Field, going fast with a girl named Bo. But somehow they just don't end up as mine. It's a death defying life I lead. I take my chances. I die for a living in the movies and TV. But the hardest thing I ever do is watch my leading ladies kiss some other guy while I'm bandaging my knee. I might fall from a tall building. I've never spent much time in school, but I taught ladies plenty. It's true, I hire my body out for pay. Hey, hey, I've gotten burned over Cheryl Teague's blown up for Rocky Welch. But when I wind up in the hay, it's only hay. Hey, hey, I might jump an open drawbridge or Tarzan from a vine. Cause I'm the unknown stuff man that makes Eastwood look so fine. 204. The armored car is on Main Street. <laughs> yeah, just like our old television show. The chameleon strikes again. Grow up, will you? This is reality. Uh, uh, four of us can pull it off. Maybe. Well, here we go. The armored car is passing Melvin. Now, Dr. Melvin's heart attack. 205. It should happen now. Call it in. It might be a trap. It can't be a trap. We haven't made any pickups yet. He needs help. He's having a heart attack. Don't leave the cab. Can you get there now? Thank God, it's a doctor. Can should be taking him away. I don't know how you're doing. You haven't lost your touch. This man's very sick. I've got to get him to the hospital. All right, take it easy, Melvin. Take it easy. We're right on schedule. There you go. You're doing fine. All right, let's go. Right on time. Let's go. Hello? Yeah. What do you mean they're gonna be a little late? They just left here with a quarter of a million dollars. Look, call the police. Attention all units. Robbery in progress. Supermarket corner of Central and Main. This is Rogers. I'm near the location. I'm on my way. I'll draw him off. Get going.
afraid you're under arrest, Father. Okay, let's get set. Wrong cameras. That was a truly wunderbar thing you did with that airplane there. You were the greatest. Well, I don't know. I still haven't learned to walk on water. That comes bad news. How do you know? She's smiling. I called. You must be very excited. I know how much you want to take a vacation. Not want to, going to. And I know how much you think you deserve it. Not to think, no. Except a bail jumper, huh? Ah. Uh, well, not just any bail jumper, the chameleon! You bailed out a lizard? No, but David Charlton changes appearance faster than one. That's him. That's David Charles, the chameleon. Which one? The man or the lady? Both of them. He's a master of disguise and quick changes. That's what made the chameleon the best mystery show on early TV. I always wonder what happened to him after that show ended. Mm. Couldn't get arrested. Till now. You know, maybe you ought to think about this, Colt. The world's greatest hunter tracking his most impossible quarry. A man of a thousand faces. I mean, consider the challenge. Getting my whole life is a challenge. The only quick change I care about right now is how fast I can get a tan. Yeah, but, but how much trouble could he possibly be to us? He's not even a professional criminal. You know, Colt, how he's absolutely right. It'll only take you a few days, tops, and he's a sweetheart. Yeah, all I'd have to do is locate him, or him, or him, or him, or, or her. Wow, that's unbelievable. Howie, that's his daughter, Faye Charles. Oh. She's a PhD doing some important research at UCLA. She's your best lead. My lead? Well, Colt, I had this idea. You see, her research grant has been cut, so she's looking for donors. I thought you could get close to her by posing as one. Terry. And in addition to your $10,000 fee, the insurance company is offering a reward of $25,000. That will buy you a real vacation. Daddy, will you stop it? I mean it, Daddy. No games. You get the money from Melvin. All of it. Hey, you're just like your mother. No trust. If you don't return all the money, all four of you are gonna wind up in jail. For a long time. I just couldn't bear to see it happen. Faye, Silas, don't cry. Don't you worry. Melvin will do as I say, so will the others. Everything will get straightened out. The 240,000 will be returned. Terry was absolutely right. We fight fire with fire. You play the big Oklahoma oil man ready to help her out, and I... Uh, what am I supposed to be, Colt? Alert, in case I flush out the chameleon. You mean you just want me to wait out here? Kid, we have no choice. I mean, who else has eyes capable of seeing through any disguise? A nose that can follow any scent. Psst. Or neither of them. See who else but you. 
It sounds like your research program could use as much help as a lost puppy dog in a panhandle blizzard. Mighty cold out there alone. Well, it's appalling. Some large pharmaceutical companies won't even bother developing cures for certain diseases because they're rare. Which means there isn't enough profit in it. Well, that's downright callous. Money's like manure. It's no good unless you spread it around. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Don't be. I could apologize over dinner. You know, it looks good down. It gets in the way of my work. Maybe you work too hard. That's my phone. Excuse me. I'll be right back. Grand budget figures you wanted me to look at? What's going on here? Who are you? Uh, uh, oh, he's just my friend. He's into snakes and lizards and things like that. I think I know who the snake is around here. I'm sorry. I have to bring your father back for a jumping bail. And you meant to use me to trap my own father? We well, did break the law. Get out! What's in that beaker? Bubonic plague. Don't do anything rash. We're leaving. Yeah, like the wind. Hello, Uncle Melvin. This is Faye. Four Adam 39, come in, please. Rogers. The phone tap you asked for at the university lab worked. A call went out to Melvin Masters, 8745 Grove Street. why we can't just follow her like anybody else. She'll be expecting it. She's too smart. She'd never spot me. Wrong. Now, you're gonna let her see you and then let her lose you. Why? Okay, but it's gonna be hard for me to be that clumsy and obvious. Yeah, we'll stretch. I'll be in touch. She has an accident. She's a terrible driver. She lost me, Colt. Good work. A riddle. What's used? Old? Torn? but still as good as new, huh? <laughs> Money! Here's your share, $60,000. Mel, it's not enough. What? <laughs> what do you mean it's not enough? It's a fourth. 
I know, but uh, I want it all. I'm giving it back. <laughs> Who did it? I don't know. I love my father, and I trust him. You can't expect me to turn him in. Look, it's the best way for him to live through this. Now, if it wasn't your father I chased, it was the real murderer. He's killed once, he'll kill again. And now the police are looking for your father as a murderer, too. But he's not a killer. He's 58, going on seven. He loves make-believe and all those characters and disguises. But his head's in the clouds, even when he was a star. He's just a kid at heart. Dr. Charles. Just a second. It's Howie. Yes, Howie. Colt, I got the whole thing figured out. You gotta get back here right away. Well, it's a little tricky right now. Colt, this could be it. All right, I'll be there as soon as I can. You don't trust me, do you? Should I? Yes. More than anything in the world, I want my father safe. She'd leave it down. Go on. We both have work to do. I'll call you if something breaks. Okay. We have more information on the. 
that lab phone tap. Two calls, both to New York City. They were to Al Esther, 555-6100, and Norman Penner, 555-2818. Starring David Charles, right? Written by Melvin Masters. Produced by Norman Penner. Directed by Alan Esther. Good, you can read. Don't you see, Colt? These guys make up a whole crime unit. They did the original chameleon shows. They must have planned hundreds of capers like this. Probably got tired of film and decided to try their show out live. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Let me show you this. They all served in armed forces radio together during the war. They went through hell together. They even saved each other's lives in battle, everything. Kid, there's no question that... I called the TV Academy and I found out that Hester and Penner are still living in New York where the show was originally done. I'll bet your residuals to donuts that those guys will lead us to Charles. And Kid, if that's not enough... It is. Let me show you this. It is? You mean you buy it? I did five minutes ago. I'm sorry, Dr. Charles isn't here. Uh, do you know where I can reach her? No, she has an emergency in New York. She's leaving on the two o'clock plane. Thanks. You're over there. Okay. Uh, pardon me. Seat taken. What are you doing here? Going to New York with you. Ladies and gentlemen, will you, now you must have forgot to call us. And all trains are in the Better buckle up. We wouldn't want to lose you. We hope you have a pleasant flight, and thank you for flying with us. What happens when we get to New York? With or without your help, I'm going to find your father, Esther, and Penner. How'd you know about them? The important thing is, why didn't you tell me? The other one's vacant. I'm waiting for this one. I want to help you. You've got to believe me. I would if you weren't trying to help your father more. Why don't you just do us a favor and level with me, huh? All right. I'm going after him. I think so. To see two of his ex-partners, Norman Penner and Alf Mister. I tried calling, but I couldn't reach either one of them. Think you can tonight after we land? I know where Mister works. Good. And how we'll stake out Penner's place. You and I'll go visit Mister together. You looking at me? Not at you, pal. Through you. You can tell. Nothing gets past these eyes. Should have known it wouldn't work. The real me. I'm meeting a computer date. See, I, I didn't want to disappoint her, so I put this on. Computer date? Uh, well, I'm sure she'll never notice. Hey, I'm an expert. You almost fooled me. Uh, sir. The other laboratory is free again. Thank you. Howie, we'll drop you off at Penner's. And Faye and I will look for Esther. Well, he works on this street somewhere. It's been years since I've been in New York. There! I just saw him go in the bar on the corner. Uh, pull up. Stay here, and I'll bring him out. Hey, lady, wait a minute. What am I supposed to do? Wait here. Faye! Hi, darling. Uncle Al. Have you seen Daddy? 
Well, he was here a while ago, picked up my share of the money and left. Did you know where he went? Mr. Hester. You'll excuse me. Let's go find the money, Mr. Hester. What is this? What? Wind up on the floor with him. Let's get going. Where to? Follow that Mercedes. Miss traffic. Come on, a girl's life is in danger. That's New York. Uh, call the police. Are you kidding? It'll take a half hour to get through. All I can do is talk to other cabs and my dispatcher. What are you going to do with me? I'm going to work out a little trade with your father. I'll never get away with it. Yeah? What are you going to do? Call the police? Listen, I'm a bounty hunter. There's a $25,000 reward at stake. Now, half of it goes to you and your friends if you can help me bottle up that blue Mercedes. No bull? Hey, guys, this is Frankie Delaney. Listen close. This is the big one. I'm following a blue Mercedes traveling south on Broadway, passing 51st Street. You drive. Listen, a girl's life is at stake. Now, she's hostage in the car. So any cab driver who can hear me, there's 12,500... Oh, hell, there's a full $25,000 reward for you guys to split. For every cab that helps to box in the blue Mercedes heading for Times Square. And we're just passing 51st. It's urgent, guys. We really need your help. We're at 49th. Times Square is coming up fast. <laughs> How can I ever thank you? I have more lies, I suppose. How in the world did you get all those cabs? For $25,000. To save me? Well, to catch him. Oh. This is his gun. If he did kill Melvin, it might be the proof we need. Colt, I'm really sorry. Faye, I really don't care. Pastrami sandwich with lots of mustard. Dr. Franklin, pediatrics, 51367. Dr. Franklin, pediatrics, 51367. You can see Mr. Esther now. How is he? 
Well, he pinched me. I guess that's a good sign. Hey, I'm warning you. There better not be any more games. Now, your father's life is on the line. And your fee? When we go in there, you're going to help me find out where your father is. And if I don't? Well, the killer will find him first. You take your pick. You feeling bad, Uncle Al? You remember those chicken salad sandwiches at Manny's Delicatessen? Well, this is worse. <laughs> the doctor said your wound isn't serious. You were lucky. Lucky? You call a hole in my leg lucky? He's trying to help us, Al. I've got to find Norman Penner and David Charles. No way. No way will I betray my friends. If the killer gets to them first, they may not be as lucky as you. What do you think, Faye, honey? Help him. I want to find Daddy. All right. What do you want to hear? Do you have any idea where Norman is? <laughs> How long is a bar bill? How many hot spots are there in the naked city? You mean he likes girls? He's a producer. And fancy restaurants? I just told you he's a producer. You know what they do. They spend money, probably on the spree of his life. My guess is that he'll start at Sardi's, 21, and horses. You're a tracker. You take it from there. Thanks, Al. And feel better, huh? I will. Until they bring lunch. Yes. Well, they swallowed the line about Norman. Good. He's probably in an all-day poker game somewhere. David, isn't it risky for Faye with a killer on the loose? Well, that's why I want her in all the wrong places. She'll be safe with that cold fellow till I find Norman myself. Father knows best. Please, never mention the competition. Say it aloud. Our driver is young. Now let's get to the phone and call Howie. Maybe Penner's shown up. Howie, what's happening? Have you seen Penner? Uh, no, no sign of him yet. What's happening on your end? Uh, it looks like a wild goose chase. Uh, Colt, don't trust her. Thanks for the tip. Telling me the whole story. Colt, I'm sorry. I'll write it on a blackboard 500 times. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Now, can we get past it? When I hear all the truth. You have heard all the truth. All that matters, anyway. Yeah, well, tell me the part that doesn't matter. You are the most obdurate, abstruse, patho paranoid man I have ever met. You don't know how to tell off a guy. My father was part of the ride. But when I found out about it, I told him I wouldn't take the money. You wouldn't take... He only did it for me. My research grants had been cut. It meant a lot to him. My mother died of the disease. Daddy felt so helpless. He's always been a doer. Suddenly, there wasn't anything he could do. 
me. So he used his old team to cook up this robbery. I think the others were just part of it to prove that they could still do it. I know Daddy only wanted to get the $60,000 in my research. All he's trying to do now is get all the money together so he can give it back. Now, you can believe me or not. I don't care. that from the first time I saw you. We're here. Fugitive arrest one. I'm staking out that building over there. So is the NYPD until you blew it. Are you looking for Norman Penner from the L.A. robbery? No. Believe it or not, New York City has crime too, you know? Let's go. jumping an undercover cop. I gotta see about getting him out. Don't move, I'll be right back. Hello? Faye, it's Al. Hello, Uncle Al. Go ahead, he's just lonely. Anything wrong? Plenty. I just heard from Norman. He found out about Melvin and he panicked. He's gone into hiding. Is that son fella still around? Yes. Not a word to him. It would ruin everything your father's trying to do. He can be trusted. It's not a matter of trust. It's leverage. If David has all the money together to give back, he can talk a deal. But if anyone else gets his hand on that money, we'll all go to jail. You understand? Y yeah, I guess so. Don't guess. Be sure. It's jail. Say prison. Watch my lips, Mr. Charles. Prison. How did you know? The smell of grease paint gave you away. She's not in her room. Do you know where she is? No, but I got what I was after. Please, you've got to believe me. Come on, I fell for that four times already. Now, we can't just walk out on her. She's in terrible danger. The killer must be following her. Now, did she talk to anyone before you left? Alistair. He has to know where she is. 
We better call Al and find out what he said to her. Gun. I know you do. I got another one. They're very available. Look, I really love chatting with you, but I got an awful lot of things on my mind. Now, where's the money? Why should I tell you? You just kill me like you killed Melvin. No, no, that was an accident. He went a little crazy and tried to protect the others. That's a good reason to kill him? He grabbed from my gun and it went off. I don't believe you. Look, you're a very smart lady now. Who needs a trail of corpses now? All I want is the money. When I get it, You'll never hear of me or see me again. I'll never forgive myself. If anything happens to Faye, I think she'll have made her a part of it. I didn't intend to. She found out. Couldn't believe what I'd done. It's hard to see your childhood idol tarnished. I was trying to be like the show. Helping people in need. And the chameleon never broke the law. Who thought up the robbery, Melvin? How'd you know? Well, he was the writer. Except this time, somebody did a rewrite. It's just not safe for a young woman to walk around New York with all this money. You better wait here. It could be dangerous. Do you really think you're going to get away with this? Of course, it's the perfect crime, isn't it? And I am an expert. And soon, a very, very rich one. Be careful, Haven't he may have a gun. Haven't you? You circle around, get ready. I'll distract them. How? I've got an idea. Stall them. 60,000. Are you gonna keep your word and let me go? Certainly. As soon as I get the other 180,000. I don't know where it is. I know, but your father does, and I need you to help me find him. Let her go. Come out of there. She buys the next one. Oh, I've been looking forward to this. You got the wrong one. Father, Duck. A prop. Dad, are you all right? Just a bump. Good work, Mr. Charles. Remind me to ask for your autograph. And so ends another episode of... The Comedian. <laughs>
Poor Cole. Only two days left for a vacation. And all that reward money you had to give up. $25,000. Be quiet, Judy. Well, I'm being sympathetic. You're being depressing. Well, that's the first time I bailed someone out twice in one week. At least you know I won't be running this time. Looks like probation for all of us. So everything turned out fine. Oh, except for your grant. Uh, that reminds me, a producer called. All that publicity helped. Said he wanted to do a new version of The Chameleon. Said he'd give an option for $60,000. Well, that's the exact amount of my grant. Well, that's quite a coincidence. Colt, how can I ever repay you? Well, I'm going to be going to Palm Springs for two days. Uh... You sure that's enough time? I owe you a lot. Thanks, Howie. You recognize me. Thank you.